Meet Swift's latest RGBW panel innovations, the Van Gogh 70 and Van Gogh 100 LED panels. The Van Gogh series uses exclusive edge-mounted RGBW SMD LEDs, which results in an extremely thin 21 millimeter LED panel that is fanless, making zero noise on set. Thinner, lighter, brighter, and quieter. These are the Van Gogh Ultra Slim RGBW panels by Swit. There's an old saying, many hands make light work. This couldn't be more true than with the latest addition to our range of support accessories, the iFootage Spider Crabs. An ingeniously designed set of support arms which go where you go, consistently and safely supporting your valuable equipment, providing you with the time, space, and freedom to create. Spider crabs provide a reliable, modular system designed to support you, no matter where you find yourself working. This versatile system cleverly combines a variety of practical support options, providing you with even more creative choices and possibilities. Action! Good. I need more passion. Camera up. Turn up the heat and make those embers glow. Beautiful. I feel good. I feel good right now. I'm on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm on fire. It's time to change the way we think about lighting. Introducing the new Anglerfish series from iFootage. Boasting cutting edge color reproduction without sacrificing portability, the Anglerfish series makes cinematic lighting more accessible than ever. The Anglerfish series utilizes a bespoke construction and a new one of a kind LED element to recreate the full spectrum of the sun with unbeaten accuracy. This unique LED element recreates the full daylight spectrum, but without the blue peak that's typically found in even the top studio lighting products. Yeah. <laughs> 
For years, Aperture has created some of the best lighting for studios and feature films. But we also know that not everyone needs a studio to create a film. Introducing Amaran. Meet the Amaran 100D, 100X, 200D, and 200X. Four brand new lights that bring power, flexibility, and ease of use to the fast-paced world of content creation. Hello everyone, welcome back to Pro V TV. Thank you so much for joining us. I am joined once again for yet another Sony <laughs> launch. You guys seem to be on an absolute roll at the moment. I am joined by the one and only Mark Weber. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you, Carl, for uh, bringing us in today. And yeah, it's been uh, it's quite quite a few product launches. It's been a month, hasn't I think, it? Yeah, I'm as busy as you are now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it been very like busy. It. So, what are we talking about today? Right, well, we have with us here uh, the A7R Mark V, which we released yesterday. And, In fact, you've uh, got a little collection going yeah, on. Yeah, we there. have. You've got, got a museum the, with uh, you. Yeah, here's the R5 itself. Uh, we'll talk about it in more detail in a second. Um, but one of the biggest things here that uh, some people may not have seen uh, is the flip-out four-axis screen. So, now it actually tilts all the way through. And if you can just see that there, it actually tilts up like the older system as well. So you've mm -hmm. got great functionality, operability here in terms of bringing the, the uh, monitor away from the camera itself. But uh, lots, lots to talk about in terms of ergonomics and what's going on inside it. Absolutely. We'll get into all the nitty gritty with some of the slides that you've prepared very shortly. Um, for those of you watching, this is live. We can see everything that you're saying down in the comment section as we go. So if you have any questions as we go throughout that, make sure you leave them in the chat and we will um, either bring them up if they're relevant to what we're talking about at the moment and they aren't going to disrupt the flow too much <laughs> or I might save them for an appropriate time. But I'm, I'm monitoring what you guys are all saying. So thank you very much for joining us. But yeah, join in the conversation if you like. But should we start with the, the base features, I guess? Yes, yes. So our, um, A7R Mark V, just a little bit of the the background, really, of, of where the R series has come from. And, and for those of you not familiar with Sony, uh, I'm not sure what the R means, then R, it really stands for resolution. And uh, it sits in the high-resolution camera range of cameras. So back in 2015... We brought the uh, A7R2, uh, obviously from the A7R1, uh, evolved into the A7R Mark III in 2017 with some additional features. Uh, and uh, of course, we've gone from 42 million pixel uh, in 2015, 17 to 61 in 2019 uh, with some fantastic uh, advances in autofocus technology and then bringing it right up to date to yesterday, uh, the R5 <laughs> uh, with a, a new processor uh, the Bions XR processor that you do find in other cameras, uh, but it is around eight times faster than the uh, A7R Mark IV. Mm -hmm. But also this new AI processing unit, which 
uh, you've used, I've used, and talking off air earlier, there is some big differences in the way that the camera handles compared to its predecessor and and some of the other technology as well, which we'll look at in a bit more detail. But um, and of course, you've got because of the process is a lot faster. You've got capability like 8K uh, video and so on, 4K 60p added to this camera compared to the R4. So it's not just an upgrade. There's some massive differences in terms of how the camera handles compared to the R4, and there are some similarities with you know the the 74 and the S3 sure. and the A1 as well. I mean, I was going to say, is that sense? Is that um, not sensor? Sorry, that's obviously not in any of the other cameras. But is that processor the same one as you're using in any of the other cameras? Yeah, pretty much so. So. Uh, it, eight times faster as we quote compared to the the, the previous model uh, but yes the Bionset XR processor is pretty much the same as what we're using in the other cameras so you know the a7 4 is a great camera to use in terms of hybrid uh, functionality and of course you're right to the top the flagship as we've got here the a1 that that does it all so um you know if you've got uh, an a7s or an a1 or an a7 IV, then you know the, the way that the camera performs you should expect that to be pretty much the same in terms of processor for for the, R, the r5 as well um but this is where it sits so there we go in the r series you're looking at speed you'd go for something like an a92 if you're looking for low light capabilities and video, then you'd be looking at the A7S in terms of alpha. And then you've got our, our basic model. And I know anybody that owns an A7 IV, it's way beyond basic. Yeah, so, uh, but it is classed as our call it the basic, <laughs> entry, <laughs> entry level uh, full frame uh, alongside the A7C as well. So that just gives you a good idea where everything sits. And of course, you've got the A1 that, uh, that does it all. So here's some you know big changes uh, where you see new or upgrade that's pretty much upgrade on the a7r4 uh, and new to uh, to this camera uh, as well as as it highlights here the a ai processing unit uh, which we'll go into a bit more detail as well upgraded image stabilization new viewfinder again similar to the one in the a7s mark iii and you've just seen as well the multi-angle um, lcd monitor which i have to say in terms of video uh, and handling and so on, I found it really useful in terms of getting low down and, and moving it away from the unit itself as well. Um, so improved resolution in terms of picture quality, that's obviously going to have a, a major improvement on video capabilities compared to the A7R Mark IV. And if you think about it, when you go on the A7R Mark IV menu system, mm. there's actually only a couple of selections in terms of video codec. So mm. uh, when you c compare that to, to when you switch the camera into video mode on here, the amount of video options now you've got in the R5 are, are huge. The A7R Mark IV was back from that generation of Sony camera when we were just looking at XAVCS, and that was the only codec that was ever in mirrorless cameras from Sony. You know, from the A7S Mark III onwards, you guys have really chucked that kitchen sink at that XAVCS codec and made it an all-eye version with SI and an HS um, for HEVC, um, and that has really expanded what these cameras can do for pro video users because the previous generations were used for pro video work but it was always a massive compromise with the codec and now we we just don't have that anymore yeah and i think if you're a you know if you're an a7 i mean we've got the a7 3 and 4 and 5 here and in terms of ergonomics and operability, there's some huge differences. But in terms of what's going on inside, mm. if you're an R3 and R4 user and you're looking to go for an A1 or an A7S3 now or even an A7 IV, then this option now with the continuation of improved, you know, huge resolution and improved pitch quality, this is more than just a, like I said earlier, an upgrade in terms of mm. this could be your next camera. But again, from a hybrid, this is a traditionally a photographic camera, you know, it's high resolution, commercial, studio, wedding, that kind yep. of stuff, landscape I, and wildlife. I think that's what's excited me so much about this camera is was the R was always not particularly that interesting for us video users at all. And obviously we're a video specialist reseller. Um, we always looked at the R's because there was always people that were mainly stills but wanted to dabble a little bit in mm. video. But if you're a hybrid user, doing that percentage either way you know they'd be very much 80 percent stills 20 percent video whereas now this is much more of a 50 50 product yeah i totally agree and i think you know there are going to be and i i looked at the same you know community sites and social sites yesterday and all the different uh, you know your video other videos and so on mm. to get an even better feel of what what's going on out there and i think a lot of people say now oh, it's you know same sense well okay there it's there's more than just that Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll find out a little bit more about that as well as we go through the next hour. But in terms of, 
you know, comparing the two, the four and the five, this is a huge, uh, huge step up in terms of uh, uh, technology. Um, and one of those things is, is this AI processing unit. Now, I, like you, had a very brief time in using it. Uh, and in terms of, you know, did I see any deep learning or, or, or change in the way that the camera behaved? No, I didn't. And I think that might be something we see as this technology grows, data from mm. what it's identifying internally could, you know, improve your workflow and so on. But what I did notice, and we've got some video to show, is the way that it locked on, the instills and video, the way that it's stuck to the subject Absolutely. matter. And also now when the uh, autofocus technology moves away from what it can't identify as a face, it yeah. actually still sees it as a face or a posture both in human and uh, animals. And I, I, I was very impressed the way that it just stuck, uh, which is great so, in terms of, you know, you don't want autofocus hunting or whatever. We definitely need to spend a little bit of time talking about this system, because I think this can be something that's quite hard for people who haven't used the camera yet yeah. to really get a sense of, because, you know, it's not like the previous generation, or not previous generation, but other modern cameras that didn't have this, were bad at autofocus. You know, no, you look at the A1, the yeah. A7 IV, the A7S, they are all incredibly good autofocus cameras, especially for video. Um, but this introduction of the AI chip specifically in it just seems to have taken everything that those were already doing with, sure, a couple new sort of highlight features on top of it, but really made all of that much more reliable and just consistent it just seems to always work now <laughs> yeah and I, I think you know let's not you know ignore the a1 the a1 is the the flagship of our, yeah. our, our series and in terms of stack layered sense in terms of uh, performance you know it, it's still a very superior camera compared to the rest of the range but what this new technology does is again compared to the r4 it, it, it kind of just when I was using it, I just didn't see the autofocus mm. shift at mm. all. Uh, and again, I won't spoil too much here because we've got some footage later that demonstrates that. But mm -hmm. it, it, it really was quite encouraging to know that that was not going to be the case. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying the R4 technology in terms of autofocus was hunting or shifting, whatever. Again, depending on what lenses you're using. Um, this just adds that next layer of, the, of reliability, I suppose. The other cameras like the, the A7R Mark IV or... or I'm more talking about the other modern cameras like A7 Mark IV, A1. They they are incredibly good when the subject is found. It's more how often that subject is found that this has improved, not necessarily the tracking once the subject is found. It's it just keeps it knows when the eye where the eye is when it can't see the eye <laughs> and yeah, stuff like that, which is and, and not just with humans with with animals as well, but. Yeah. It, but We'll come on to that in more detail in a second, but again, using the uh, infrared sensor that we find on the camera, the, it, it, it also is giving you a more accurate white balance. And yeah. uh, I did some landscape shots, and I have to say that what I did see a, a level of improvement was those dark shaded areas. There was mm. a little bit more detail in there than I've seen in previous R cameras, which I think, again, in terms of skin tone, in terms of um, color reproduction, you know the, the process is changing that so we're giving it there's a bit more match yeah. between a7s and 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 r in terms of uh, things like s cinetone right. and so on we've had a couple of questions come in so just mm. before we get onto the videos yeah. um, amanda leeming has said mark is a amanda. bad influence amanda. after one training session with him i swapped all my gear in to go sony <laughs> you clearly know that was who a long that time is. ago <laughs> And Jogbird is asking about Nikon to E-mount adapters. Now mm. I have a bunch of Nikon glass, but wouldn't mind trying Sony. Um, absolutely, can completely see why you want to start trying Sony. Um, the adapters work brilliantly apart from autofocus. We still haven't cracked um, anything else to E-mount adapters for autofocus. If you, if you use all of this autofocus technology that we're talking about, you need to be on a native E-mount lens. If you want the best performance, you need to be on a Sony native E-mount lens, with probably a G Master, really. Yeah, but I to be honest, the basic Sony ones and other third parties like Sigma, Samyang, people like that, Tamron, um, they do focus very well. We've got lots of examples on this channel. Um, you, you say the same thing? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, again, you know, if you're looking at moving from another brand to Sony and, and I, you know, I understand it, it can be quite, uh, you know, you've got good 
products, good glass, you've invested, you want yep. something that maybe your camera doesn't have, whatever. Um, it's a big thing to do. But again, the native element, you know, uh, is, is, is paramount in terms of getting the best that we're talking about here. Absolutely. And there are 70 lenses in the range yep. and you've got other third party. And yes, you can use an adapter. Absolutely. Um, and if you just want to get started as well, there are some fantastic cheaper options as well. Now, both from third parties and like Sigma do their, their range of compact eye primes, which are only a few hundred pounds each. But you also have your own versions, those compact non-G Master um, lenses, their prime lenses, but they work brilliantly. You know, they're not, yeah. they don't focus as well as the G Masters. Well, the optical quality is not as good, but they're pretty good yeah, still. And, and, you know, 70 lenses, um, you know, there's, there's 40 full frame, 30 APS-C and so on. I've, don't quote me on that. I'm sure that's pretty much the, the right the right uh, split. But then the advantages of APS-C is then you've obviously got lightweight lenses, and some of them actually, you know, the latest new ones that we've produced have got some great uh, focus breathing and close mm. focus capabilities mm. as well. So in terms of quality, you're right, but in terms of size and weight, you gain. Uh, Ian, instead of carrying a bag around, your, your coat becomes your bag mm. because you're putting lenses in. You know, I don't do that, but you know, you, you sure. could do that. We also seem to be having some frame rate issues that people are talking and thing. Um, so sincere apologies for that. It's quite unusual. We never normally have any frame rate issues and the, the team are shaking their heads at me over there. So if, if we can fix that, we will. Um, apologies, it's quite unusual for us. So we will see if we can figure out what's going on there. But um, let's crack on with the rest of the stream. So Yeah, so if we look at um Human recognition, the evolution, I suppose, as well. Uh, we've started up with, uh, you know, uh, auto exposure sensor, just seeing, um, you know, a kind of contrast bit, bit mapped image. We've moved on to face detection. Some of our cameras have smile, shutter, and so on. Uh, and then real time tracking is taken into mm -hmm. consideration that pattern, depth, um, uh, contrast, movement, uh, and so on. And I think these are really important to show to get around some of the maybe over-marketing criticisms yeah, with I mean, launching a new camera like this, because it's not like other cameras haven't been using AI in any way, shape, or form. Like you say on these slides, all of these technologies are based on what AI has taught yeah, us. Yeah, and it's current technology. So, you know, color depth, pattern, and contrast, and so on, is actually in the camera that somebody may own now. And, and I, you know, I like to bring this to the, to the table because a lot of people don't get to see this or it's in a marketing video that you lose sight mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to come on to in a second is now how we've moved and evolved from subject recognition to now human pose uh, recognition or estimation. And we released a load of videos yesterday, as you can imagine, and I've just added this in here now just to give you an idea of mm. what, what it looks like. Now, when, the ne when this comes up, please don't expect this um, graphic to be the, what you see in the camera. This is a, a, a simulated <laughs> uh, piece of content, but it's picking up, you know, head, knees, shoulders, uh, 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 shins, everything that you can see here, head and so on. So um, trying your hardest not to start singing. Yeah, though, I nearly you? started singing then. <laughs> um, and it's um, just something that we've used uh, off on, online that we've, we've pulled out. But, you know, it, again, this doesn't do this in the camera, but it just shows you that I think as this technology evolves, it could evolve into something. I don't know what it could evolve into, but, uh, you know, a very highly sophisticated, intelligent camera that, you know, you don't have to worry about when you switch it on. It's it's doing everything for you in terms Absolutely. of autofocus. And I think in later on in that video, there were some examples of what it does actually look like down the viewfinder. Yes. As you're seeing. Yes, it. absolutely. So and then, you know, again, how we've evolved, we come from, you know, human and birds in, in, in the cameras currently. Then we're bringing in human um, pose estimation and then the same in terms of uh, animals and I have to say, I tested this, uh, and I even tested it on uh, bicycles, uh, you know, people cycling through the park, and it works. Uh, but it doesn't just work. Uh, I'll give an example. As the cyclist I took some footage of the other day was coming through, you know, trees, it missed it, missed it when the tree was mm -hmm. there but carried on tracking. Mm -hmm. it, so it knew that the flow of that subject, it Kind that of was, was a person on a bike that uh, went behind that tree, so yeah, therefore it's probably going to come back out the other side. And it did, and it did. Yeah. And I was quite encouraged by that. So again, if Absolutely. that camera is learning at, as it's, you know, you know, you're not inputting into the camera and telling it to do that. Yes. It's actually learning as it goes along, which I think is uh, something that I've never seen 
uh, in our cameras before. Um, and this is just a breakdown then of, okay, this is what the Alpha 7 IV has, and this is what the Alpha 7 R 5 has. And as you can see, it's not just, you know, picking up the front of an airplane or a car and, and, and so on. Actually, you can go into the system and change the way the sensitivity is. So mm -hmm. those that are familiar with the transition speed and the sensitivity in video and stills with the current range, you can go and deep delve into it, you know, even deeper, which is quite impressive. I'm still learning uh, about that. Unfortunately, I've got to give that back tomorrow, but I won't have enough time. But maybe in the next <laughs> few weeks when I do, and you get a chance to test mm. it again, that might be something that uh, that you look at. We could do a whole video. Uh, you, 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 you could, know, but discussing it, this for it, hours. <laughs> it, it is important to, to show because it is something that is new. And, and this, again, there's lots of uh, footage on, on, on social and stuff that we've created, but it, you know, it knows that um, motor car driver has a helmet it knows there's a head in it so it's going mm. to continue focusing because on it. it can identify the rest of the body and the limbs it distinguishes it, it one knows from that's the other. a head even yeah. though that there's a helmet over um, it. back for you I mean the cameras have been pretty impressive in terms of profile and, and fa yes. face on um, and portrait sorry but you know even more so and again with animals and I did try this at home with my dog and it does it does actually do what what we're showing here now this is a bit of footage I created um, uh, mm. the other day and uh, you know, this is just really showing you as we speak over how, you know, even my hands on my face, the the, the box is still still over my my hand. Um, it shifts there, but in terms of, uh, you know, again, it knows it's there. I focused on that eye. He's hiding the eye. Um, I've got to go back to that eye. So, uh, not forgetting, you can still select the left or the right eye as well, or leave it on auto. But the way it just sat on my face uh, in terms of you know sticking to the eye it was it was just fan fantastic very accurate and even when i close my eyes um it still recognized uh, mm. my face uh, even at portrait and and profile uh, as well and then we did have a bit of time to uh, get some um, pigeons that, uh, that flown flown nearby that's coming up in the next footage now uh, here we go so it recognizes even when the pigeons turn around it will recognize that it's a, a, a bird and you've got to obviously have this in bird uh, mode uh, mm. but you can uh, adjust that as you uh, you know within with, within the menu system and again here's another one here as well it just shows you that when you do lock on I know the birds are static but these are just for demonstration purposes um, it was a little bit trickier doing it in, in birds in flight but uh, it still did uh, pick up um, the subject as well so that just gives you a good idea of you know the differences between this camera and other cameras in terms of what you see uh, at the back of the screen of the camera um, and then if you look at, again, how we've evolved, so the R5 now will do the same as the 7.4 and the R4 in terms of human and animal, uh, but now we have, uh, we're adding bird uh, and also uh, insect. I haven't tested that myself, uh, but in terms of insects and cars, trains, aeroplanes, and it did find uh, things like um, you know, uh, bicycles as well. Uh, as you would expect, with a sensor that's improved and it's upgraded from the A7R4, um, you've got higher resolution, and it does have low sensitivity. But if you compare, you know, if, if low light uh, and noise is obviously very important to you, then you, know, you may be looking at something like an A7S, mm. A1, or an A7 IV as well. But you know, not say it's not very good. The, the, the improvements have been uh, made have been fantastic. And again, in terms of skin tone, we now bring in S Cinetone as well. Uh, in terms of video capability, so you know there's a there's more of a match between the the R series and uh, and the S than there probably have ever has been done, and and the A1 and the A7 IV as well. Uh, again, from a uh, for photographic perspe perspective, the pixel shift um, mode has always been very popular in terms of the A7 R4, uh, and now that continues where it, it shifts the pixels four times to create a 16 uh, selected image. Uh, with an output of 240 million pixels and then you use our image edge software uh, to bring that uh, into stitch it together and it'll give you then um, a 60 million uh, pixel image but one of the things here and I'm, I'm not too sure how the technology does work but it will now take out little bits of movement so mm -hmm. because you've always had to have this on a tripod you know and, and have mm. you know, a pretty much static image it actually will t take out um, things like here it's saying there's a car, there's a running car, it's detected and it will actually take that out yeah. in terms of processing. Um, 
I've not. Which is fantastic. Well, it is. It is. Because you've always had to use this for, like, if you go back to the previous slide, it has an example there of a, of a church ceiling. Absolutely. That's the sort of situation mm. that this would be used for and really, really useful. But when you start getting to more towards landscapes, you couldn't really use it because a, a tree swayed or something like that. It would, it would mess up the compositing. Um, and there wasn't, it would take a long time to fix it if yeah. you noticed it at all. Yeah, uh, I was going to use first. the same example in terms of trees. I, I'm not mm. sure if that, you know, how that effect would be, but I think if they, if it, you know, there's so much processing software now that takes things out. I mean, even on phones and stuff. So I, I think it must be that if it if it can detect mm. something in terms of contrast and so on, and it's small enough, then um, it, it it can take that. I'm uh, sure there will out. be lots of people on the internet <laughs> testing it. Uh, so that's pixel shift. And then in terms of stabilization, I did notice uh, in terms of getting lower um, shutter speeds uh, compared to the A7R4, it did work very well. We're quoting uh, eight steps in terms of five axis stabilization uh, in terms of capability. And we have improved the handshake uh, between the camera body and it depends what lens you use as well in terms of keeping the gyro and the sensor mm. all together as well. Mm. So that's only going to improve in terms of resolution uh, with, uh, within stills and video as well. And it's standard now to have active mode in, in, in our cameras uh, in terms of being able then to post uh, with a crop uh, in terms of electronic stabilization, post editing as well with Catalyst Browse and, and Prepare and so on. So um, there have been some improvements uh, made in that and then compared again to the stabilization that you get with the R4, you're able to be able to get you know, lower light, handheld, blur free images and I say that with a caveat obviously because uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not you know, I'm not a master photographer or anything like that so um, but again you, you know depending on what uh, lenses you use and combination uh, you should see a, an improvement in, in stills and uh, in video as well uh, and as we showed earlier so the, the LCD monitor four axis pulls out mm -hmm. um, it's higher resolution than the a7R4 as well as the viewfinder. So this is the viewfinder you find on the A7S III, and I've got to say the magnification is excellent, especially when you've got this high-res camera in terms of resolution. Um, and it says here, you know, 1.6 times uh, the resolution of the, the, the one that's found on the R4 as well. Uh, and, you know, the refresh rate is very good. I, I saw very little artifacts in, in the viewfinder compared to the previous one. Uh, so in terms of, you know, that's going to obviously drain battery power if you're going to be using that as well, so just be aware of that. But in terms of, I think, the overall viewing experience, it was it was excellent. Um, and it was, uh, you know, I'm only at a glass uh, wearer for um, uh, reading uh, at the moment. That is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was comfortable on the eye when I was using it um, mm -hmm. with glasses as well. And then looking at the buffer time, you know, now that we're able to uh, use uh, uh, lossless compression, uh, raw, large, medium, small, uh, and I did some testing actually this morning because I saw something online um, and that is in with the mechanical shutter as well. So you can use uh, medium, small, large uh, lossless compression uh, in the mechanical shutter. So we're saying that we're compressing the files, but actually you're going to get more on your SD card as well. And we've got some buffer uh, time uh, rates, uh, so buffer speed rates as well. Uh, so that's new to, to this camera, uh, but approximately 50 to 80 percent of the file size um, isn't degraded uh, compared to uh, uncompressed uh, raw it's, files. So it's something that people skip over often quite a lot in camera launches, but things like this make such a difference. When, yeah, it when does. you're actually working with 70, 60 megapixels <laughs> sensors. Yeah, I mean, you'd exp you know, and, and, and previous models, you'd, after a certain time, it slows right down. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. R5 continues, uh, you know, um, I can't remember what the... Uh, increasing footage, um, increasing speed is, but it, it is it is definitely uh, you know down to the uh, to the uh, new bro processor that's in there being able to do that, and um, you know wildlife photographers mainly for this one is being able to use obviously full frame and crop uh, within the camera as well um, with very little um, uh, degradation on on the mm. image. So now you know you, if you've got a two hundred to six hundred mil lens and you can. Um, customize a button on the camera or the lens you can flick that into uh, crop mode which gives you 26 million pixels um, but without any um, mm -hmm. you know hassle of uh, uh, shooting between the two and in type terms of um, file size as well you, you you will come on to autofocus but you you're getting the best use of that sensor uh, in terms of uh, crop uh, capabilities 
Yeah, that is a really interesting point, actually. I hadn't really thought about that one. So just for clarity's sake there, for people who do want to jump in and out of that mode, if you're taking stills and you set it to medium compressed raw, you're going to be able to jump in and out and it will keep the same resolution. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Which is... I, I just select, you know, Pretty wildlife incredible. as a, as an example there, but you can well, use it for many. Sports many. would also yeah. be using yeah, it, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so as a result of uh, the improvements in autofocus, we now cover um, seventy nine percent of the sensor, and if you turn it to portrait, um, it's eighty six percent. But it's six hundred ninety three uh, phase detection points. Um, in terms of low light capabilities, again looking at what people are testing. I think some people uh, are getting uh, the, the capabilities of minus four EV as well. Um, and then if you look at the coverage, this is quite a good slide actually in terms of what, when you're using autofocus, um, you've on the left, you've got the full frame, 74%. Then you've got uh, the 86% um, in terms of uh, A7R5. And then when you're in APS-C mode, uh, the one on the right is with a full frame lens as well. So you're gaining you know, almost, you know, I don't know, is that 100% maybe, uh, but you're getting, and I know people aren't going to be shooting stills and video, in, you know, in the corners, but mm -hmm. uh, in terms of autofocus in, in crop mode uh, on the A7R5, you've got some amazing coverage in terms of autofocus and, and, you know, all on chip as well, so on sensor. And this is the um, information on the we, 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 we. Again, this is using a TV scan, uh, so you can actually change uh, with the middle of the button as well uh, on the mode dial on the back of the camera, so you've got even more control. Again, I haven't tested this, but I would expect that to uh, be a lot more in, uh, improved over the previous model as well. Uh, this isn't on the A7S III, uh, the TV scan, so um, uh, whether or not that comes in the future, I, I wouldn't be able to tell, but at least uh, I think it's a good addition if you're uh, certainly a hybrid shooter. And then... Uh, again, sorry, there's a lot of photo-related... Uh, it's fine, it's uh, primarily still a photo camera. ...questions, uh, uh, slides. slides here. But, um, <laughs> you know, we've been asked a lot about having focus stack and a focus bracketing. Just mm -hmm. to say this is focus bracket, uh, so you you would need to obviously do this in camera and then edit uh, post. Uh, but you can shoot up to three, you know, say 299 images uh, with shifted focal points as well. So, mm -hmm. um, again... I haven't had time to test it, but it's not. It's a good addition Absolutely. in terms of uh, um, uh, bracketing uh, in the camera. And um, I haven't tested this on video, but I did test it on stills. So I had my son and my daughter next to each other. And what you have to do, uh, for those that are aware or, or not aware, if I go to the next slide, uh, you can program up to eight faces into mm. the into the camera. Um, so I programmed my kids in, uh, and then literally. They both came up on the screen, but I pressed the joystick at the back and it shifted to the other. So again, if you've got the, you know, having, you've got children of yourself, uh, 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 yourself, but older kids, when they're next to each other, you can never get them to stay in line. Uh, no. You know, you've got a nice shallow depth <laughs> sure. field and one's out, but you know, so you can quickly uh, change from one to the other. Um, if you you know if if it's shifting and, well, you, and you wanted to keep in one. Place. One of the best real world examples of this technology that I've heard it's a wedding photographer ah. that uses it to program in the bride and groom. And then if they are in shot, it will just prioritize the bride and groom. Like why would you ever want a group shot where the bridesmaid is in focus, <laughs> but the bride isn't? When, when we're doing <laughs> events, and, and uh, you, as you know, we do a lot, uh, wedding photographers, a lot of people don't realize it's in there. You see the light bulb moment going, I know it sounds a bit silly, but at the beginning of the wedding, you're going, right, Come on, let's take your photo. You take, and, and you've mm -hmm. got them programmed in. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. select and move them as well, mm -hmm. um, and you know it works uh, superbly. Um, but I know this, uh, you know, it, it, it is is not new, but it's uh, you know sure. certainly the way that you can select from one to the other uh, is in the A seven R Mark V. And that little user interface of seeing all the faces is lovely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you see them, and you can move them around, and so on. So, uh, some of our colleagues uh, from Japan there, but um, uh, actually, I need to erase this because my my kids are in that one. So, <laughs> note for self later. Um, <laughs> and then on to video. So, yeah, um, it it does do 8K, uh, 24P, uh, 4K, 60P. Uh, there is a crop, 
uh, which I think a lot of uh, your viewers would know by now. Mm -hmm. And in terms of um, 4K 30p as well, 24 frames, and it does oversample. And there is a, a slightly larger crop there in full frame. So, so there has been a lot of talk about this in terms of the crop in 4K 60 particularly. Um, so it's a 1.2 times crop. Mm. So on the a, um, A7 Mark IV, which also does a 4K 60, but then you have to be in Super 35 yes, mode to do. enable it. So yeah. you'll have a 1.5 times crop. Yes. So that, that's the real world difference for those of you wondering at home between the A7 Mark IV and this new A7R Mark V. Uh, in t yes, they are both cropped for 4K60, which is a slight shame, but the difference is 1.5 times versus 1.2 times. Yeah. So it's much less cropped. We, we talked earlier as well, uh, not, not uh, on this uh, webinar, but in terms of recording time, and we will come on to that in a second, sure. but in 8K, we, we, do rec we do recommend it's 30, 30 minutes, but I think um, so, some uh, in terms of um, uh, you know, the camera getting uh, warm, uh, mm. In terms of that, but looking at some of the um, uh, videos that were coming out yesterday, mm. and some people that are recording it, you know, be way beyond that. Um, oh, so, probably, you know, yeah. we, we recommend that it's it's 30 minutes. Um, and then to here, it's just really to say, look, we we have some fantastic lenses in terms of being able to um, support 8K, 4K. Um, and again, coming back to the, the native element of being able to have that edge to edge clarity uh, and high resolution um, using you know lenses like G Master is going to give you that you know ultimate uh, uh, picture quality but at the same time the autofocus capabilities if you're shooting autofocus that is in, in video uh, I don't see why not with the new technology that we brought into into the cameras so just a, a little bit of extra information there it's full HD in terms of 120p uh, that has been upgraded as well uh, and you've also got slow and quick. So if you want to do some slow-mo time-lapse, that kind of stuff, you can in, in the uh, S&Q mode. And you can go into the menu system and obviously change that. Uh, as Worth well. pointing out there, because it's something I didn't actually realize when reading this first spec, um, 8K is 24p or 25p. Yeah. There's no 30p no. for our American friends or anywhere else in the world that might use that, um, which obviously here in the UK is not, not a problem or anywhere else that uses PAL rather than NTSC is not a problem. We're using 25 or 24 anyway, um, but anywhere in an NTSC country. Um, and AK yeah, and, and full 24. HD 120p as well. So uh, yes. yep. uh, not 4K 120p. Um, and just to, again, a little bit of footage I did uh, yesterday actually, uh, before we came here today. Uh, this is my daughter in the garden. Just, you know, just a little bit of messing about here, but just really to show you, I'm not prompting the camera at all. Um, so this mm. is this is in AK mode, um, just letting the camera do the action. And as she turns around, it's it's fine in the back of her body. Um, and yeah. just literally... How, how tiny she is in the frame and, she, yeah. and how far over to one edge she is in the frame. And even when she's throwing the leaves in the air, it's just staying on, the, uh, on her eye all the time. And uh, um, they're great for kids because <laughs> they... They love doing this kind of thing. It's, it's great for autofocus to tests. Yeah, they never stop moving. <laughs> well, when we were in lockdown, that's all I, we could do. So, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so in terms of autofocus, really, really impressive mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and allowing the camera to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what this is going to look like um, uh, to people that are viewing, but this was AK footage. Uh, and I just have to say, I was very impressed. I've used this camera, you know, the A74 in the past for for video uh, but i was very impressed in terms of the resolution the detail and the color reproduction as yeah. well i unfortunately a, a video this is a video clip within keynote being then yeah, chucked over to an 18 yeah. mini pro it, which is then being streamed out in 1080p yeah <laughs> so uh and if you if definitely you get what i saw then 8k footage <laughs> great um but yeah so in terms of differences in in like as we said earlier didn't we that the, the the menu system on the a7 IV, there's hardly any yeah, video absolutely. options. And and now you've got this um, huge improvement in terms of video capability. But it's not just that. You've got um, 4210 bit as well. You've also yeah. got a Cinetone. You've got the yeah. digital audio interface in terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, improve audio. Uh, active mode, um, focus assist, uh, focus the, map. Um, I would go so far as to say if anyone watching this is an A7R Mark IV user and they do video work, you know, this is just a day and night upgrade. You know, Absolutely. you just should upgrade. This is this is not an incremental improvement. This is completely redesigned to be a proper video camera rather than a compromise. Um, 
for stills, you know, it's more of the, the A7R Mark IV was already a very capable stills camera. This is an incremental upgrade a bit more, but in video, this is transformative. Yeah, I, t I totally agree. And again, you know, we've never really had a slide like this to, to support the R series in terms of video in the past. So um, a lot of you would be familiar with um, the, the, the video compression and so on. So in terms of um, 4K, 8K, uh, you, you pretty much have uh, most of what uh, the other cameras have. And in terms of slow and quick as well, uh, which we'll come on to mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. what requires for uh, CF Express Type A cards. Um, you know, you've got uh, more more creative opportunities with this camera in terms of sure. video, but alongside with a very high resolution sensor. And that's just some information there in terms of proxy recording and what um, record settings you can use in terms of CF Express uh, Type A cards. Um, just finishing this off now. It, there's anything that I have, I might have said a few things here already, but there's some other things that we haven't. Hybrid log gamma as well. Uh, you've got 16-bit raw output. We'll Which is a big deal because the A7R Mark IV, oh, sorry, A7 Mark IV doesn't have that. Yeah, so, yes, which, again, um, I haven't seen any testing on it yet, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the A1... Well, that, that won't work yet because the external recorders yeah. won't recognise it yet because it's a brand, brand new camera. But I'm sure yeah. within, certainly within a month, hopefully within a few weeks, um, the likes of Atomos will um, support it. Uh I mean, soft skin effect, you know, it's, it's, it's there as well. <laughs> um, we've covered the active mode, uh, but again, breathing compensation, focus map, and peaking display as well in terms of also uh, the markers. Uh, you've got all the video capabilities and the men main menu. So I know we picked up on this with the FX30 a few weeks ago. You've also got the main menu system now, which you can customize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also in terms of how the camera looks when you're recording, uh, you you now have more familiarity with the FX3 and the FX30, uh, mm. uh, uh, etc. with the new display. And in terms of functionality of um, uh, touchscreen, uh, you can also flip the uh, menu up uh, and so on. So if you, you know, we're all familiar with that with phones, technology and so on. So it's becoming more and more intuitive in terms of uh, touch control. Uh, in terms then of um, uh, connectivity, you have... Uh, wireless capabilities uh, that you'll find again on on the a7s a1 uh, and also uh, the a74 uh, in terms of speed uh, so you've got a usb 3.2 c uh, gen 2 port as well uh, and that obviously helps in terms of um, uh, usb streaming which we'll come on to in a second it has that uvc uac yes, support yes. as well doesn't it yeah which if anyone doesn't know what that is at home literally it's, it's a Overcomplicated piece of tool and technology that does an incredibly simple thing. You just plug it in over USB and Teams, Zoom, anything like that, it's, Skype, will just see the camera straight away as a webcam source. It, it is as easy as that. And um, you've got different oh, resolutions. Sorry, it was the next slide. <laughs> and, and, and you can record to your SD card uh, as well if you're not recording to an external device and so on. So, um, And it is. It's pretty much flawless. You, you, once it connects, um, it, it does, does give you a message. And uh, you can turn that off. So every time you connect the USB, it will always, you know, it can default to um, uh, USB streaming. Um, and just really threw this in just to show you a, a, a graphic uh, view of the magnesium all alloy body uh, and also the heat dispersion system as well. So it's weather resistant uh, and sealed, uh, not fully sealed uh, like most of our uh, cameras. So it's weather resistant, not fully weather sealed. And then how the heat is dispersed as well with uh, which again if you've got the a7s3 and the a1 um and and so on then you'll you'll, you'll be familiar with that um and there we said earlier 30 minutes uh, approximately uh, in terms of uh, uh, heat uh, structure uh, moisture resistant uh, it's also the anti-dust mode as well and now what happens is you it's defaulted to uh, on you can go into the camera turn it off and uh, the shutter will will come down when you turn yes. the camera off which is fantastic i'm so yeah. glad cameras so are now no doing that way you, yeah obviously don't don't push the shutter but you, uh, you, no. you won't have access to the, you won't be able to see this the sensor at all it's purely for dust when you're changing yeah. lenses yeah. uh and then you've got an anti-dust mode as well so when you switch the camera on you can uh, it will vibrate the the gyro that's around the sensor to to repel anything uh in terms of uh, functionality and um operability then yeah full-size hdmi flash sync terminal uh, you've got your micro USB and your USB-C 
Um, you've got your microphone jack and your headphone jack. And a full-size well. HDMI, full which size I'm HDMI, very which, pleased to see, considering yeah, the, this is the more stills-focused model. Yeah, micro on, on, on the other ones uh, as well. So a full-size HDMI. Same battery. Uh, so in terms of FZ100 and um, charging again, you know, um, I've, I've, in the last few releases we've had, I've seen a, a huge improvement in time, charge, charging time uh, compared to obviously micro USB and so on. Um, and finally, then a very busy slide, but it's it's got this pretty much the differences between uh, the the four cameras here: R5, R4, A1, and A74. So let, let's leave this slide up mm. a little bit. We had we had a, a um, excellent question from Jim, which I think gets really to the bottom of it. He says, "Hi guys, I have an A7R Mark IV and an A1. Mm. Why should I upgrade apart from only to keep current?" So using this Good slide question. here, I guess, really we're talking about upgrading his Mark IV to Mark V. Yes. In this situation. Um, so what do we think are the big differences? Well, I think you know, see? he's obviously got the one camera that does it all. And yeah. um, if he wants to get close to that without buying another A1, mm. and he's in that position to mm. to move, then it's it's a it's an ideal, you know position to trade up to the to the r5 so it all depends on what he uses that second yeah. camera for if however I would say if he uses it for video if he's doing any hybrid work at all i would just say upgrade 100 uh, yeah yeah if, if you know he's asking the question so yes um i can't see any other reason why you you wouldn't and unless you can afford to obviously buy the the a1 then then have two sure. a1s but sure. um i think in terms of uh you know if you want something new in terms of autofocusing um, you know, you, you've got an A1 that's it's, you know, the best autofocus and uh, reliability that we've got in the range. So you, you're not getting the same autofocus. Yes. You're getting something yep. different. You will end up with an A camera and a B camera that the B camera isn't a huge compromise <laughs> yeah. over the... Because the, really, back to the Mark IV, it was far slower. It, the autofocus yeah. was slower. The shutter frame rates were slower for stills. The video was a huge step backwards over the A1. Really, the only area of the camera that wasn't a step backwards and a big compromise over the A1 was the resolution, which, of course, was higher. And that was the trade-off. You know, you were stepping up a little bit in resolution for sacrificing every single yes. other area. With this new Mark V, I mean, every area is slightly less, apart from the A1, apart from perhaps autofocus yeah. with this new AI stuff could in some situations maybe be better than the A1, but you know, that they're, they're much more on a level field there. But every other area is nearly as good as an A1 rather than a big compromise yeah, behind. I agree, it's a good way of looking at it. Um, so I would, um, while we're still on this slide, like to talk a little bit about the A7 Mark IV mm. because in my head, as a video centric um, user, this has meant that the A7R line is now not just viable as a hybrid choice, but perhaps one of the best hybrid choices from Sony for 50-50 hybrid work. Uh, the A1 has always been incredible for that, but the A1 costs what it costs. And so that's not a camera that everyone's gonna rush out and buy. You know, that is a specialized camera for very high end users. Um, the A7 Mark IV is also an incredibly good hybrid camera and it comes in at a much lower price point. And now, to me, this fits that middle ground because the A7S Mark III fit in that middle ground, but it's 12 megapixels. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that for a lot of hybrid users, that is, is perhaps a bit low for the types of work they're doing. Um, this now fits that middle ground really well. Um, but I have heard people online saying perhaps it's maybe too close in performance to the A7 Mark IV. But I think this slide really emphasizes what some of those big differences are, because there are some big differences. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you put me in a, quite a tricky place now because, <laughs> um, you know, please don't, you know, uh, accept that what I say, you must go and do this. I mean, you know, in fact, if we've got some, you know, really more than capable cameras for different varieties of genre of photography and filmmaking mm. and um uh you know there's in terms of functionality it's very similar in terms of um 
um, operability. It's very similar. Mm, they feel very similar uh, yeah, to use. Yeah, uh, but in terms of, I suppose, uh, the way I'm going to use the camera, the, the viewfinder is is obviously a lot sharper. Massively sharper. Um, you, you're not far off in terms of uh, autofocus coverage uh, yep. if you're using it for stills uh, and videos. So actually 693 versus 759. So you know, it's, it's not too far off there. Um, you've got this brand new autofocus system. Yeah, uh, I track which it. if I do a side by side comparison, then the way that it locked on, the way that it was accurate, the way that it performed in terms of autofocus, the R5 really did, mm -hmm. you know, outperformed the A7 IV in terms of how it l locked on. But the A7 IV is <laughs> his leaps beyond the A7 III, and again, those two cameras are still very, very good it's as well. Not like it's a bad focus. <laughs> no, um, the camera obviously is got brilliant. A, a, an additional <laughs> slot in terms of. Um, uh, CF Express cards on the R5. Yes, just to clarify that the Ace most cameras have got the both card slots doing both CF Express and SD cards, whereas the A7 Mark IV, I guess, as maybe a cost cutting measure to keep the price down, has one slot as SD only and one slot being SD and CF Express. Yeah, um, and then again, just just looking at the slide here in terms of connectivity, uh, you do have slightly improved connectivity, but not not massive, which you you know for. A, huge resolution sensor then you know mm -hmm. someone's not double but it's not far off double the a7 IV so I think they complement each other well and they they definitely sit side by side but I think if you're looking for that extra resolution um, yes. with similar video capabilities uh, and you might have to you know push it um, a little bit here and there in terms of 4k comparison but with that additional 8k I think you know you have got a, a considerable um, camera that you probably wouldn't have chosen an R series camera you know, in the way that we're talking here. Sure. I mean, I, I guess my massive oversimplification of it <laughs> would be on the still side of the camera, you'd get double the resolution mm -hmm. with options for scaling that back if it's sometimes too much, um, as well as more reliable autofocus tracking. Um, and on the video side of it, you would get raw output over the HDMI port, which is a, a big thing. Um, and the addition of 8K if you want it, although there are the rolling shutter does ramp up a little bit for 8K, so it's not going to be for every single project, but for a, a wide shot when you need the detail, it has the 8K yes. modes, um, and 4K 50p without quite so much of a crop. Um, so there are definitely some um, step ups over the A7, but I mean, I know this is a stream for the A7R mark, Five. What this does really show is the value for money that you get with that A7 IV. The A7 IV yeah, is a fantastic. I mean, when when value we produce something like this, <laughs> it always um, kind of highlights and you know the value for money that you get on on the previous models. So you know in everything we're saying here, we're mm. not saying that your A7 R4 or your R3 is no good anymore. We're, we're not. Um, sure. As with most technologies, something comes along uh, that's got improvements and so on. So you know the files that come out of both cameras are. You know, absolutely fantastic. But um, I think for me, just one thing, it was the autofocus and just the just the feel of the camera, the actual the the, the viewing, the the, the handling, uh, really really impressed me. Uh, without me having to think too much about yeah, is it in focus? If it's not in focus, yeah. or I'm going to have to work harder here on this, or do I need to? It just was switch on and worked pretty impressively. I, I, I get why people at home are struggling with the autofocus thing a little bit in some of the comments questions because the the Mark IV and the, the other cameras do such a good job already of all this autofocus tracking and subject detection. To hear people like us who have used the camera, albeit for quite a short yes, window yes. of time, but have used the camera, rave about how good the new one is. They're sitting home thinking, but... The other one's good. <laughs> what it are you is. It is. And I get that. It, it does is. feel different, doesn't it? It, do, it does. And and you know we are fortunate to be able to use it. And mm. I think this uh, is available to buy later on in November yes, sometime. It's, it's not too far um, away. You know, and and some people are going to go and buy it and replace, and some people aren't. So um, we will be looking at uh, taking the cameras out to. Sure. Uh, Places like yourselves. Yep, we're looking at doing some uh, events we'll put together. Put some dates in the diary. We've so got the showroom come, space yeah. here, so you can come and see it and whenever we get done. You know, either. having it properly set up, uh, exactly. whether that's video or stills, I think uh, will give people an opportunity. So you've got a good few weeks to have a look at comparisons. There are bound to be more videos coming out from people. Um, 
and our team will be um, uh, armed with these over the next few weeks in terms of going out to stores and mm -hmm. uh, working mm -hmm. with uh, yourself in terms of um, you know people coming in to have a look at it. Uh, and, and I think once you see it, then you 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 you'll understand that there is a big difference in terms of how it performs. But what you've currently got is is very it's good. Pretty good. Yeah. You know, if you've got an A one, A seven four, whatever. You know, we did a roadshow last year for the A seven four, and um, uh, it wasn't. An, you know, we're talking about similar things until you tried it. You can then, as a seven three user, could go. Ah, oh, you can see the difference now between the eye autofocus, how that's locking on, and so on. And I think if you do a side by side comparison, um, then you'll be able to see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So uh, watch this space, I suppose, from that point of view. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a very good place to wrap that up. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to everyone who watched this. Sorry if there were any frame rate issues and um, technical problems there at all. Um, we will look into those and figure out what that was for the people that did experience that. But of course, this is available to watch after the fact as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for all your questions. And if you have any questions, if you're watching this after the fact, just leave them down in the comment section down below. We will get back to you. But thank you so much for your time, Mark. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for the time. And uh, thank you for all the questions as well. Thank you very much. No worries. I'm looking forward to trying the camera again next that time means. we can get our hands on it. Thank all you. Right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Meet Swit's latest RGBW panel innovations, the Van Gogh 70 and Van Gogh 100 LED panels. The Van Gogh series uses exclusive edge-mounted RGBW SMD LEDs, which results in an extremely thin 21mm LED panel that is fanless, making zero noise on set. Thinner, lighter, brighter, and quieter. These are the Van Gogh Ultra Slim RGBW panels by Swit. There's an old saying, many hands make light work. This couldn't be more true than with the latest addition to our range of support accessories, the iFootage Spider Crabs. An ingeniously designed set of support arms which go where you go, consistently and safely supporting your valuable equipment, providing you with the time, space, and freedom to create. Spider crabs provide a reliable, modular system designed to support you, no matter where you find yourself working. This versatile system cleverly combines a variety of practical support options, providing you with even more creative choices and possibilities. Action! Good. I need more passion. Camera up. Turn up the heat and make those embers glow. Beautiful. I feel good. I feel good right now. I'm on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm on fire. I'm on fire.
it's time to change the way we think about lighting. Introducing the new Anglerfish series from iFootage. Boasting cutting edge color reproduction without sacrificing portability, the Anglerfish series makes cinematic lighting more accessible than ever. The Anglerfish series utilizes a bespoke construction and a new one-of-a-kind LED element to recreate the full spectrum of the sun with unbeaten accuracy. This unique LED element recreates the full daylight spectrum, but without the blue peak that's typically found in even the top studio lighting products. Yes.